I've been here since uh, Thursday. It's my first time um, in Canada. And um, a lot of people that I've met, uh, including a woman walking her dog um, in Dartmouth yesterday, want to know about Brexit. <laughs> and um, um, I'll just say this, that instinctively uh, Brexit doesn't fit with the geography of hope. Uh, So because I've been here since Thursday, I have the um, honour and privilege uh, to meet people like Tracy and to meet people like Tony Smith uh, and the team at the Black Cultural Centre. We spent a day um, looking at the restorative inquiry on Friday and then um, they hosted us, hosted us on Saturday. It was uh, um, an emotional and powerful experience. I just wanted to um, acknowledge them. Um, I saw them operate as a team um, and uh, if you want to see a restorative team, it's right there uh, in that centre. I want to thank Jen. Um, I, I won't um, uh, give her too much praise because uh, she, finds, uh, she finds that difficult, um, <laughs> as, I, as, as I've discovered. Um, uh, uh, and I want to thank her because um, she's asked me to come here and, uh, and speak, so she obviously thinks I've got something useful to say, um, which you want in ten minutes' time. <laughs> One other person I want to mention before I get uh, going is Nigel Richardson, who, um, whose job you nearly gave me. He was, uh, I could see him laughing over there. Uh, he thinks I'm after it anyway. Um, but Nigel's been a real inspiration uh, for me and introduced me to restorative practices um, and has created the conditions um, in Leeds where I work um, for restorative organisation to, uh, to develop. Uh, so I've travelled 2,773 miles to be here. Um, I could uh, talk for a long time about the work in Leeds, but um, uh, the one thing that I would say is uh, that there is a direct correlation uh, between uh, leadership behaviour and the behaviour of frontline practitioners when they engage with families and children. Um, and that's, that's my message um, from this presentation. So you can ignore the rest of it. I'll, um, I'll put some context around it. But um, really what we've done in Leeds is to try and create a restorative organisation, a restorative organisational culture, so that social workers in Leeds, when they engage with children and families, behave restoratively with them. Our mission in Leeds has been um, to try and move to something closer to uh, the New, Ze New Zealand model, um, to try and get to a point where actually things like family group conferencing are an entitlement for people before the state intervenes uh, through formal processes like child protection conferences and care proceedings. Um, Nigel talks about this idea of uh, the family being the greatest utility of the 21st century, um, and it's the greatest underused utility of the 21st century. Um, through um, methodologies like family group conferencing, we can reach out further into families and find solutions for children uh, to remain within those family and friendship networks. Because we were going to go so big in terms of um, things like family group conferencing and trying to involve family at every stage, um, and what it, one of the things that it really takes is for us to be able to suspend our professionalism to an extent, to be able to give power to families to determine how they're going to resolve the difficulties that, uh, that they face. And if you're going to do that in an organisation the size of uh, which I uh, lead and manage, you have to do something about the culture. So we um, um, designed a restorative leadership programme, um, which wasn't just training, it was about engaging in six months' worth of work. And everybody from frontline manager to myself um, got involved in that, in that piece of work. Um, and we met uh, in small groups, um, randomly selected from across the organisation. We met in small groups and um, we learned some of the theory around restorative practice. We looked at our practice and we set ourselves homework that we went away and practised and then came back together as a group to reflect on what we'd learned and how some of those processes had worked out for us. So over a period of time, what we developed was a culture of uh, restorative leadership. When you're trying, again, one of these things, when you're trying to do that, um, uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, um, be the change that you want to see in the world. So there's something for me personally in this journey. 
Um, and I'd been in a senior position at times when the organisation had been punitive in its approach um, to um, relationships with uh, managers and staff. Um, I had to take that journey of changing that through this process. Um, but I also stood up in front of 90 managers across the service, um, apologised and talked to them about what the organisational culture had been like and why, perhaps, um, but um, acknowledged that, acknowledged how that had left them feeling, apo apologised for it, um, and then asked them the question, what is it when you look up the organisation towards me that is now not restorative? And if you want to um, ask social workers what's wrong with their organisations, they're very quick to tell you. They're really skilled at telling you what's wrong with leadership and what's wrong with the organisational culture. And they came up with half a dozen things that were um, really problematic in the way that we were leading the organisation. Um, so we listened to that, we took them and we changed them. I'll give you one quick example. One was um, that when we undertook performance management, the style that we used was to send out lists to the social work teams telling them about the things that they hadn't done. So in this conversation that I was having with the staff, they were saying, uh, that really pisses us off. Um, and it's not restorative. Stop sending the lists. So we had this conversation, and I said, is it okay for me to know this information? Uh, and they were like, absolutely yes. So I was like, okay, that's good. So you're okay with me knowing this. It's just um, the method of delivery. They were like, yes. So... I kick the layer of managers beneath me, they kick the layer of managers below them, they kick the managers below them, they kick the social worker, ultimately the social worker goes out and kicks the family. You know, that's the kind of culture that you've got in, um, through those lists. So we sat down and talked about how we were going to change that. And we um, came up with around ten basic things that we really wanted them to do very well. And, and they, they came up with what those ten things were. And those were uh, about reassuring everybody in the organisation that children were being kept safe, um, but also that um, they, they could talk in, uh, about why the performance in certain areas was uh, in a particular way. And we turned the whole thing on its head so that they reported that upwards through the organisation, rather than me sending them a, a default position around their performance they would on a regular basis gather that information, put a story around it, what's gone well, why has it gone well, what hasn't gone so well, what are you going to do about it? And they would tell that story and they came together as teams and started doing that and that would work its way up the organisation to me so that I know on any given day um, in a particular team if there's an indicator that's giving me some concern, I know what it's about because I've got the real story behind it. So recently we said to them, you don't have to do those reports anymore, you know we're doing really well. Um, and um, uh, they were like, no way. We absolutely love doing this. It has now become a way that we actually lead and manage and reassure ourselves that, that we are safe. In this, in this period of time, um, Leads as a Children's Services um, has gone in 2009 from um, uh, the external um, regulator, Ofsted, that uh, Estelle talked about. They also uh, regulate um, Children's Social Work Services. And in 2009, they called us inadequate, um, and they said that children in the city weren't safe. When we've done, we've taken this restorative practice approach through the organisation, and last year, Ofsted came and visited, and they said that we were good with outstanding for leadership and management. Restorative practice transformed the organisational culture and it transformed social work practice. Um, we do, we want to work with families based around their strengths. We don't, you know, there's, uh, we talk about there being 10% of parents who do willful harm and neglect to children and yet we have a child protection system that deals with the 100% in that way. And starting to use families and you, hearing their voice and their own plans is about turning that system on its head because actually in that 90% people will come up with um, real sustainable solutions to deal with the difficulties that they are facing, not um, a social worker going in and saying, I need you to do this, this and this. So our role becomes much more about enabling families to take control of their own lives. Thank you.